Marina Keegan was an extraordinary girl. In 2012, she graduated from Yale and touched so many lives during her four years there. When she was just 22, she wrote an essay called The Opposite of Loneliness. That essay would later go viral, reaching millions of people. Her words bridged generations and captured the attention of people all around the world, but the reason for the essay's sudden exposure is tragic. Here is the story of Marina Keegan from some of the people closest to her. I first met Marina in November of 2010. As a student, she was exciting, smart, stubborn, contrarian, brilliant. She was one of the most exciting students I've ever taught. Meeting Marina was fun from the very beginning. She knew what kind of a person she was, and it was the kind of person that I wanted to be around. We had this bond that was uh, over things we couldn't eat. She was gluten-free and I'm vegan, so we made this like vegan gluten-free tempura sushi. So we found the overlap in our Venn diagram of, of uh, diets. Senior year was a really big time of change for a lot of us. We would start to think about real life and losing what we had at Yale. We were definitely excited and scared leading into graduation. The Opposite of Loneliness, which was originally written as a graduation speech, is a particular articulation of one of the things that we talked about a lot. It was posted on the Yale Daily News website, and the essay essentially says two things. Loneliness doesn't have a word in our language that is its opposite, but it's something like community, and that's how I feel at Yale. And its other message is, it's not too late to change your mind about a career. It's not too late to change your life. It's not too late to change yourself. You're so young, you have plenty of time. We don't have a word for the opposite of loneliness, but if we did, I could say that's what I want in life. The best years of our lives are not behind us. We're 22 years old. We have so much time. The notion that it's too late to do anything is comical. It's hilarious. We don't have a word for the opposite of loneliness, but if we did, I'd say that's how I feel at Yale. How I feel right now, here, with all of you. Marina's parents, Tracy and Kevin Keegan, are here. I'm so happy to meet you all, and I'm so sorry for your loss. Can you tell us what took place that day? <clears throat> Marina went to stop off and introduce her boyfriend to my mother um, and sort of have a celebratory brunch, uh, you know, graduation brunch with her. And then she was heading down from Boston. Then she was heading down to the Cape to join us. It was my husband's birthday celebration, and you know we made a big birthday dinner, and we just kept waiting. And then, unfortunately, the state troopers showed up. And told you that Marina had been in a terrible accident. And I understand, Kevin, yeah. her boyfriend was driving, uh, and he was not hurt in the accident. You comforted him. You made sure that he wasn't prosecuted. Where did you find the strength to, to do that, Kevin? Uh, he, he's a wonderful young man. And you know, we didn't want to lose two lives. And uh, he did everything you would expect a person to do under those circumstances. And uh, uh, Tracy and I uh, you know, didn't want him to. Uh, you know, to suffer any more than, than he, you know, was suffering already. You know, she wanted to be a writer, and it seemed that she was well on her way. She had gotten a job working at The New Yorker when she graduated. She had written a play, hadn't she, that was produced posthumously. I mean, she was really unbelievably prolific. What was it about the essay, The Opposite of Loneliness, that you think struck such a chord in so many people? Obviously, it was because of the irony of some of the words, ultimately. 
But was there something more, do you think, Kevin? You know, she was really showing her, her fears and vulnerabilities. Uh, and it was about her friends and how much she loved Yale. And uh, I, I believe that there's so many people, you know, who, you know, loved the fact that she said that, you know, we're so young and, uh, you know, don't, you know, be afraid to change. It's, it's never too late to change. We heard from so many people who said that they, you know, did something that they, you know, had wanted to do their entire lives and, you know, were doing them because of her words. Well, you mentioned Marina's friends and classmates, and two are here today, Chloe Sarviv and Richard Myron, who we heard in that piece about uh, Marina. And I know, Richard, you and Marina were going to be roommates uh, after you graduated. And w what do you think she would have thought about all this? She thought a lot about leaving a legacy and what it meant to leave something behind when you die. Um, I mean, I think she would have thought it was too early to release everything because she was still working on a lot of stuff. But, uh, but I think she would have been amazed at uh, how widely she could connect with people outside of Yale. And Chloe, you know, you spoke so beautifully about Marina. She was the kind of person you wanted to be with and maybe be like, perhaps. What, what do you think she taught you? I think the two things that I try and hold on to the most that I learned from Marina are, first of all, that it's very easy to think more about the opportunities you don't have than about the opportunities you do have. And Marina was exceptional at taking advantage of all of the opportunities in front of her. And at Yale in particular, that's hard. There are a lot, and I definitely didn't. Um, so that's the first. And then the second thing that I try and continue to think about that Marina taught me is that when you believe in what you have to say, people will listen to you. Even when she wasn't totally sure of what she was doing, she put it out there as if she was behind it and had faith in it, and that made people sit up and take notice of her. And that's something not a lot of people her age, our age, can do, and so I try to keep that as well. I know my daughter Ellie, as I mentioned to you all uh, before the show, graduated a year after Marina, and she read the book and she said, she was so inspired by someone who did take such full advantage of every opportunity. I mean, I think she probably perf personifies the notion of living, living and appreciating every moment you have because life is so fragile. She had a feeling of urgency that she wrote about in her journal. She said, I don't know why I feel this sense of urgency. I really need to keep working as hard as I can.